Hello everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy. My name is Jagriti Sharma and guys, uh, as you can see, I'm starting a new playlist. I'm starting a new playlist on the NMR spectroscopy in which we will be talking about all the basic concepts as well as after we have done all the concept, I will be uh, making videos on the previous year questions which are asked on the NMR spectroscopy as well as which are uh, also, uh, you know, having the IR, UV, and NMR data all right so based on these three spectroscopy I will be solving questions and if you have not yet watched the uh, playlist for the IR and the UV uh, visible spectroscopy definitely you must uh, visit it once all right okay so let's begin without any delay yes so guys let me give you a very short introduction my name is Jagriti Sharma and I'm also a verified educator educator on the unacademy plus platform so now guys there is a uh, Unacademy provides a lot of content in the free form, basically in the free video courses. So you can visit my profile and you can check out the free video courses also. Along with that, we are having regular special classes. Regular special classes. Special classes are basically the free ones which uh, every can, everyone can watch. Free live sessions they are. Okay, so if you want, you can come up, you can follow me on Unacademy so that you can uh, get the updates uh, about the special classes for the, or the free classes and Unacademy Plus platform is a paid platform. So if you want, uh, you can uh, definitely explore the Plus platform as well. Okay, so yes, and also I would like to tell you that on Telegram, I'm present by the name Jagriti S. Okay, so this happens to be the referral code on Unacademy Plus as well. So yes, if you want, you can search for this name <clears throat> on Telegram and you are going to get it. Okay, you can join the Telegram group as well. All right. So let's very, very quickly begin what we have to talk about. What are the basics of NMR spectroscopy? Okay, so first thing first, we are going to just look at the basics that what is happening on a molecular level okay so that we are getting the spectra and after this we are going to talk about the splitting the delta value everything okay yes so just like the ir spectroscopy tells us about functional groups so, so yes we have studied the ir spectroscopy and what do we get to know we get to know about the functional groups whether it is a carbonyl whether it is a amide ester and so on okay so just like ir spectroscopy tells us about the functional group nmr spectroscopy identifies different or magnetically distinct atoms yeah why do, what do we mean by this what are magnetically distinct atoms which are present in a molecule so let's say if we are talking about methane let's say if we are talking about methane then we have all of these hydrogens which are present all of these hydrogens which are present are all equivalent they are chemically equivalent as well as they are magnetically equivalent. However, however, if I let's say draw a molecule, let's say if I'm drawing PCL5, if I'm drawing PCL5, okay, that is a trigonal bipyramidal geometry, all of you know that already. Yes, so if I'm drawing PCL5, then what happens is these two Cl are magnetically, must be magnetically uh, distinct. Why? Because the hybridization or let's say the position is different okay so we are having a lot of stuff going on in the nmr spectroscopy lot of uh, examples to consider okay but this is a fluxional molecule what is fluxionality that also we will consider a lot of topics are there so let's start with the very basic one okay so we are going to know about magnetically distinct atoms which means magnetically different atoms which are present in a molecule yes and how are we going to see that okay so first thing first nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy nmr is based on the spinning of the nuclei right so there is a very common question that which of the following nuclei will be nmr active and which will not be okay so any atomic nuclei possessing odd mass or odd atomic number or let's say both they are going to be they are going to have a 
क्वांटाइज स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंटम ओके सो जस्ट लाइक द इलेक्ट्रॉन हैज़ अ स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंटम और बाइटल एंगुलर मोमेंटम इवन द न्यूक्लियस हैज़ अ स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंटम व्हाई बिकॉज द न्यूक्लियस इट इज चार्ज ओके इट इज चार्ज एंड इट इज ऑल्सो स्पिनिंग ऑन इट्स ओन एक्सिस इज इंट इट द न्यूक्लियस इज स्पिनिंग ऑन इट्स ओन एक्सिस एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज क्रिएटिंग अ स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंटम ओके सो इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंटम uh it is going uh, the molecule is have going to have a spin angular momentum if the mass is odd or the atomic number is odd or let's say both of them are odd let's see some of the active nuclei so first of all if we talk about protium over here 1h1 so definitely you can see both of them are odd both of the atomic mass and the atomic number are odd okay similarly if we go to deuterium over here you can write it 2h1 or you can write it d also deuterium so here we are having odd atomic number similarly if we go to c13 carbon now this is an isotope of carbon c13 is an isotope of carbon which is present in a very very less amount 1.11% but yes it is active why it has got a odd nuclei similarly if we talk about the normal uh, nitrogen isotope the atomic number is 7 it is odd and definitely it is nmr active if we go for oxygen the 17o8 this isotope is uh, nmr active for fluorine both of the mass and the atomic number both of them are odd so it is going to be active same goes for phosphorus it is active and same goes for chlorine right so these are our active isotopes which are commonly talked about and let me tell you guys there is one very important thing which is again asked that for example if you are studying the proton nmr spectroscopy and suddenly a question is asked to you from the 19 f nmr spectroscopy then you don't have to get confused because you are going to see something from which you will be able to predict the values or the uh, you know the values or the splitting values which are going to be similar see so let's talk about the nuclear spin quantum number which is i okay so we know that the nucleus is going to spin so it is definitely going to have a spin quantum number so for hydrogen it is half and let's check that for how many other isotopes it is half for c13 also it is half for 19f also it is going to be half for th 31 phosphorus it is also going to be half which means that the splitting of uh, or let's say the splitting of the spin of isotopes uh, in the presence of magnetic field is going to be the same for hydrogen for c13 for 19f and for 31 phosphorus okay so this is the best thing because now you will be able to predict their spectra just like okay so even if you know for the hydrogen you will be able to predict very easily okay so there is one more thing that we want to consider that is the number of spin state now what is the number of spin state guys just like our electron can exist in many spin states our nucleus can also exist in many spin uh, spin states and the number of spin state we are going to find out from this formula 2i plus 1 okay which means that which means that if for example we are talking about hydrogen over here so 2 into i i is half plus 1 this is going to give us 2 so basically there are going to be two spin states for hydrogen when it is splitting into the magnetical magnetic field right so it is going to split into an alpha and a beta level which means this is our ground level this is the excited level so we are going to discuss in the next slide what is that okay so i hope that all of you can see that when we are having the half value of the nuclear uh, spin angular spin quantum number when the value is half in all the cases we are only getting two spin states we are getting two spin states so that is why i was saying that all of these nuclei are going to show the same nmr spectrum or let's say similar nmr spectrum as compared to proton okay the splitting and everything would be similar okay now and yes all of them are going to follow the pascal triangle now if i check for deuterium here the nuclear spin quantum value is 1 it is different from half and that is why 
the splitting of deuterium does not follow the pascal triangle it is a different uh, completely different uh, uh, ratio that we are going to get okay so that is why the nuclei which is having a i value is equals to 1 they are going to show similar splitting values okay yes for them the 2 i plus 1 or the number of spin state is going to be 3 and that is why they are showing different values okay all right so this was all now we are going to move on to what are spin states basically what are spin states all right so we just talked about this that nucleus being positively charged it creates its own magnetic field right on spinning yes just like the electron does right so the nucleus also creates its own magnetic field on spinning so the two spin states correspond okay so we just saw that for i value is equals to half we are going to have 2i plus 1 value 2 so we are talking about the two spin states over here which correspond to i value half so the two spin states correspond to two different magnetic field one of them uh, sorry uh, yes so basically what happens is guys let's say this is our nucleus which is spinning into this direction okay so in the presence of a magnetic field what would happen in the presence of a magnetic field what would happen some of the nucleus are going to uh, create a magnetic field which is in alignment with the, uh, with the applied magnetic field and some of them are going to oppose the applied magnetic field so let's say this these are our nuclei which are basically moving in the spinning in some random direction okay all of these are random nuclei so when we are applying a magnetic field like this there are going to be some nuclei which are going to be aligning whose magnetic field are going to be aligning in the same direction as the applied magnetic field and and you see that the nucleus the number of the nucleus is greater than the number of nucleus which is opposing okay so let's say this is our alpha and this is our beta so for alpha these are these nucleus are those which are existing a, along along with the applied magnetic field okay yes so that is why we generate two spin states i is equals to plus half and i is equals to minus half for the ones which are uh, aligning and the ones which are opposing okay yes the nucleus spin of either align with or oppose the applied magnetic field as shown above so this is why we are generating the two spin states for i value half okay now yes so who is going to have i value plus half and who is going to have i value minus half that is the question it's very easy as we are applying the magnetic field the nucleus are being separated into two types basically some of them are going to align with the magnetic field which is our b naught so they are going to be i is equals to plus half they are going to have a more stable state and those which are opposing the applied magnetic field are b naught uh, are going to have i equals to minus half and they are going to be unstable all right yes now what uh, this energy difference between the alpha and the beta state this is going to give us the peaks all right this transition <clears throat> sorry this transition of the alpha nuclei into beta this is going to give us the peak of nmr and as you must have seen that the splitting also depends on the magnetic field yes magnetic field strength uh, matters for the splitting and how is that going to happen if I am just increasing the magnetic field let's say if I am increasing the magnetic field the difference between these two states is going to also increase so let's say if this was a lower magnetic field this is our alpha and beta with a lower magnetic field and if I increase the magnetic field to very high value then the splitting would also increase all right and what would happen a greater amount of energy would be required for the nuclei to go from the alpha to beta state okay so we can say that the frequency is directly proportional to b naught as well as what is frequency guys frequency is just a measure of energy isn't it it is just a measure of energy so greater the splitting caused by the magnetic field greater the energy uh, is required for transition to take place e is equals to h nu and we also know that energy 
or the change in energy is going to be equal to the gyromagnetic ratio multiplied by the magnetic field multiplied by Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Okay, so we are not going into the derivation, but you just have to remember that energy is proportional to the applied magnetic field. Okay, and similarly, the frequency is also proportional to the applied magnetic field as you can see over here. Now, gamma is our gyromagnetic ratio which depends on different nucleuses and uh, higher the value of gamma, higher is going to be the sensitiv sensitivity of the nucle uh, nucleus that we are dealing with in the NMR spectroscopy. Okay, so yes, so all of it boils down to what are the number of spin states if i value is equals to half we are only going to have two spin states derived by the formula 2i plus 1 okay and the same thing is going to be repeated for the 1h1 from the for the 19f9 and for 31 phosphorus 15 and so on okay so it is going to be the same for all of these right so yes, so guys, uh, this was a little bit of theory about the NMR spectrum, right? How are we going to get the peaks? It was all about it. Now, what are going to be the delta value? What is going to be the spin pair coupling? I'm uh, making more videos on that. And if you like this video, so please give it a thumbs up. Definitely give it a thumbs up, guys. And yes, also share it with your friends if you think the content is worth it. And also subscribe to the channel because definitely I'm working on creating a playlist of uh, a lot of topics the nmr spectroscopy i have in my mind then there is mass spectroscopy then there is a uh, name reactions and so on and yes i promise to uh, be active and let's say upload two to three videos per week all right i'll try my best to be active and yes thanks for watching everyone thank you from Rasayan Academy, please follow and subscribe if you haven't. And guys, if you want, you can visit me on Unacademy. A lot of free content is being developed and definitely it is going to be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon.